the NFL podcast has lived long enough to see themselves become the villains. That hit close. From the Chris Wesley podcast studio, it's around the NFL. I'm Dan Hansis. I'm joined by a hero, longtime friend, Mark Sessler. How you doing, bud? Are we villains now? Not villains, but we were just uh, talking about right before we started how listening to some older clips from the show, um, there was an innocence, and now with experience comes a different feeling. So I guess I somehow equated that in my head to heroes and villains. Did we sell out to the man over time? I don't know. Maybe that's part of today's show is trying to fight that. Uh, My paycheck tells me that I've sold out to nobody. (laughs) But I will say that, like, maybe, you know, if you want to spin it positively, we have more wisdom, and with that comes more cynicism. We were callow youth back then. Callow. I'd like to go back to that place, though, because I was listening to some of those clips, and we Who, seen... The, the salad days? Yes, what? salad days. Wait a second. What's this? Is that... Oh, my God. Oh, my God. There's Colleen Wolf's music. There's, There's a wolf, wolf. turning up my headphones. There's a wolf. There's a wolf. Can't blow your house down. There's a wolf. There's a wolf. Can't blow your house down. Don't mess with her. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Stupid. Don't mess with her. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Stupid. By the way, we're all sellouts. <laughs> As Colleen uh, this? tables a four pack of Kelsey Grammer from Fraser's <laughs> beer, Faith American Ale, that she's getting for free. And handing over to me? Uh, I think that you and Mark should split this. It's a gift, <laughs> not from me, from Kelsey Grammer. Really? From his, he has a, he owns a brewery? Yes, is that this the is scenario? his brewery. And I met him on a flight, and okay. now I get beer shipped to my house. How often? Um, I, we have a lot of this. There's a it, lot of beer. <laughs> and if you listen to the Throwback Podcast, you know that Faith American Ale is the official beer of that show. Mm-hmm. And... Um, my buddy Bob has a long, sordid history with Kelsey Grammer, who made fun of him on the Donahue show in 1993. <laughs> um, and now it's our official beer. And and, and Connie, I couldn't help. I, I, I hope I'm not speaking out of turn. And by the way, welcome to the podcast. Hey, thanks. It's um, great to be here. When, you, when Kelsey was chatting you up in first class and then started plying you with all this alcohol, did you ever do a Google search and see that all 14 of his wives look exactly like you? He told me that he met his current wife on a flight, and we were on a flight at the time. So, um, yeah, and then he got my address. So well, everything's that's fine. that's how it starts. We does got you, a lot does of beer. Johnny know about this? John knows. I did it just for the story, so I could come in and be like, I gave Kelsey Grammer my address today. Everything's fine. And then I had a gigantic pizza that I had transported from uh, Philadelphia. Nothing to be concerned about. Um, let's, let's get into some things, Connie, because it's been a while. Okay. You were with us at Combine, mm-hmm. and that was great. And a um, couple things we wanted to take away from Combine. And, Ricky, I'm going to need your help in a second to do some quick Googling. Uh, first of all, one of my favorite moments in uh, our work travel history occurred after we were leaving the steakhouse, um, the famous steakhouse, of course. With the name always is St. Elmo's. St. Elmo's. Saint yeah. Elmo's. We're leaving. It was me. You, Mark, Greg, uh, Ricky. We had a nice, we had a nice crew there, and we're walking out the door into the cold February night in Indianapolis, and all of a sudden you hear like, "Hey, Don!" I was like, "Who?" Didn't recognize that. I turn around, <laughs> and it's a listener of the show, and I wish I remembered his name right now, but he was like super nice and was like i know you talked about that this is a good steakhouse to go to and <laughs> and uh you were gonna be here so I he w- had a pipe yeah. and a long coat <laughs> <laughs> and then in the middle of the commentary with me you know what catches his eye this one right here sure and he he stops speaking and he looks over and he goes oh yeah the tiny box <laughs> 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 and it made everything worth it. It was the best moment and of my career, maybe. Stop thinking about that now. Oh, now he's sending you oh, beer, too. The tiny box. It was really great. Um, and then, so that was one thing I loved about the Combine, Connie. The other thing I loved was uh, you learned something, didn't you? Something got revealed. 
Okay. Connected to head coaches and what they're paying yes, attention to. Yes, oh, I this got you. Juicy. I got you. Okay. Yeah. And I know there was this was connected to the split ends and Ricky. So if Ricky, you want to get in here as well, or maybe we don't talk about that. Let's cut that out. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Pick it up from here. Go okay. Ahead. So I have very good intel here that one of the 32 coaches in the NFL is very upset about a ranking that came out that he was involved in. And it was the hotness rankings. And he felt that he was far too low. What do you mean hotness rankings? I guess there was someone that came out w- that rated and ranked NFL coaches based on their handsomeness, their the hotness factor. Ricky, can you find that? Can we? Where was it? Was it like a on a website somewhere? I, I assume I, people were tweeting about it. Um, but let me look. I think I it was kind it. of a little random, but he was specifically upset that he was behind. I think he came in like maybe 25th on the list. Ooh. And not great. He was behind Bruce Arians, which he was unhappy about. He was behind many coaches. And this was confirmed by the head coach himself, the GM of the team, and uh, someone else in the front office. Can I, is he like, a, a, is he younger or older in scope? He you... is um, probably. It's not like Andy Reid is annoyed or something. No. Okay. Uh. Uh-uh. But I think Andy Reid might have been ahead of him. Oh well, see that would so, be if you're younger. That's... I found it. I believe. I would say I he's our in our age range. Okay. Oh, he's young. He's. Mm-hmm. Are you looking at the um, ESPN Southwest Florida page? It. Uh. It's. It's a. I got it off some New Orleans based thing. So he's so upset that he was ranked so low on this that he's decided to take the entire off season to get in shape and prove to everyone See, that he should be higher up. I knew it. I, this this is amazing to me that the coaches are plugged in like this, but it's also a sign that this wave, Mark, of younger coaches, it, they don't all look like Wayne Fonts anymore. And they all read the internet and they all care about their looks and everything. And now, now we know, thanks to Colleen's dogged report. Oh, yeah. My oh, goodness. yeah. You are the new and, insider. Here. And wait a second. One yeah. other great nugget about this yeah. is he was having this coach was having a conversation with Matt LaFleur and he walked the coach walked over to me and I said, oh, there's number one, huh? Oh. And he knew immediately, like without any context, I said that. And we hadn't even talked about it yet. And he knew immediately what I was talking about. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, that's got under his skin. You have blown the roof off this. Now, I found it because here's LaFleur at number one. And Colleen, feel free to abstain. I don't want to put you in an uncomfortable okay. situation. But Mark and I will be happy to uh, share our thoughts on the top 10 hottest coaches. Yeah. Yep. Um, LaFleur won. Brian Flores, number two, since dismissed under – do agree with that when that was uh, yep. you know, still still handsome man, no longer a head coach. Right. So that moves up my man, Robert Solid, and number two. Still no sign of a certain Cleveland coach. Cliff Kingsbury, number three. Hmm. Mike Tomlin, four. Sean McVay, five. Mike Vrabel, six. Wait a minute. Kevin Stefanski buried at seven. Belichick Ooh. at eight. Zaddy. <laughs> what? Zaddy. Kyle Shanahan, nine. Pete Carroll, Rounds out the top ten. Now, Debbie Hansis would sign off on that. Deb, she's been loving Pete Carroll since 93 with the Jets. And wow. for his age, he is a very good-looking man. Got like, I think you got a nice smile, salt and pepper in. hair. Yeah. I think that gum. Sessler uh, heard from my mom about her feelings on Pete Carroll. Uh, on one of the first times that we met you and Wes, my mom decided to unload about how much she hates Pete Carroll. Yes, out that, of nowhere. It seemed to be a sticking point with her. <laughs> yeah, I mean, among I other sticking still points. I don't know she had, why. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think uh, Dan Campbell gets dinged a little bit here. Um, I think he should be higher up. Um, And you could certainly make a case that uh, some of the other young guys, like, uh, let's say, Nick Sirianni here, uh, maybe he deserves to be higher. I mean, Andy Reid is behind Sirianni, but Arthur Smith and Andy Reid are right next to each other. Sean Payton buried in the back end. Whoever this annoyed coach is, though, I mean, this was not a poll of thousands of people, correct? This was one person. We've been doing hotness rankings on this show for a decade. Well, we've done hot butt rankings. Well, right. but we've talked. We, we've done some like you know how the coach looks overall. Oh, we yeah, we yeah, discussed yeah. that offhand. But if this was a list put together by one subjective person, uh, maybe the annoyed coach shouldn't take so much offense to and it. But it's knows, out there. So who knows what list they were going off of though, too? Because there's a lot of lists right. I think floating yeah. around out there in the ether. But you right. know what? This is a coach that likes a chip on the shoulder. It sounds That's like good. it's motivated them to improve body and mind. Do I? Should I? I don't want to be unfair and or mean spirited, so don't take this that way. But um, 
they are public figures. So do you want to hear the bottom five according to this? Yes, yeah, so yeah. that's, that's where I'd start probably, to be honest. <laughs> Uh, my guy, Mike McCarthy, speaking of zaddies, he is uh, fifth uh, to last, followed by Mike Zimmer, no longer with the uh, head coach ranks, Ron Rivera, Matt Rule coming in at 31, and, and, and dead last, Vic Fangio, no longer head coach. So that means Rule has some catching up to do. Now we have a whole mm. crop of new coaches as well, oh, yeah. which need to be restarted. So maybe we'll check back in on this. But that let's not, let's not lose the biggest storyline here, that the coaches are wildly plugged in on this and annoyed – that there's internet discourse about who's the best looking coach. Right. The idea that they're tucked away in some bunker eating Chinese food with no connection to the outside world is, is oh, not accurate. What's mm-hmm. that sound? Oh, it's Vince Lombardi rolling over in his grave. <laughs> Everything's a competition. <laughs> competition, football, sports. That's what we're about. And we're going to get to everything that's going on around the league here with Connie Fox and the Sizzler, uh, including... I think this this is going to be fun. Greg is on um, vacation, well-earned, and um, he's going to be disappointed to learn he missed this because it's been a while. But the return of one of our favorite segments from the old days, Qual es tu? Fantasia. And you know what I was thinking, uh, Mark? Because it's been a while. It's probably been a year since we did this segment. Yeah, it has. Uh, which, by the way, is it's it's uh, the translation, the literal translation, Mark. Well, you know, Dan, you and I were together yesterday, and we actually asked a Spanish-speaking person, and they dis- disagreed with us. But I think it is, what is your fantasy? But in, in a previous episode, you called it, what is your fancy? Mm-hmm. Um, and we asked a Spanish-speaking person at, a, at an eatery um, if Fantasia checked out as fantasy, and he totally disagreed with us. Right. Well, so, I mean, I made that overly complex. Google but, Translate. Mm. That that said. that that's how we came up with the segment because we came up with a segment called this was like seven eight years ago. Right. What is your fantasy? And then just plugged it into Google Spanish. Hey, we've we got, got this. Randy back here. Chavez, he's gonna settle the score right now. Randy, what do you Randy. got, buddy? What is yeah. the translation of what is your Hola, fantasy? Mis amigos. <laughs> Hola, señor. <laughs> tu fantasía? There it is. Oh. There it is. Qual es tu fanta- fantasía? Fantasía. Okay. See, that was our original question. Mm-hmm. Right. All right. So right. we're we're accurate mostly. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Thank definitely. you, Randy. Well, then, what was this other what was this other Spanish speaking person Fantasia? attempting to accomplish with us? I don't. I don't know, know what he, whatever he said. We translated and, and it didn't seem to check well, there's out. There's also right. different countries have different words. Right. So, mm-hmm. like slang, I wasn't know. I don't know where he came from originally, but let's let's get. So it's Qualis tu fantasia. I like that. And how about we put a colon on there because it's mm-hmm. been a while. Qualis tu fantasia. El regreso. The return. <laughs> Is that right? Is that right? Is that right, Randy? Randy. <laughs> Como get se him dice back on, get that headset back on him. <laughs> you want me to say it? Or? Oh, no, well, yeah, actually, yeah. we would love that. ¿Cuál es tu fantasía? Like that? Yeah. And then el, Ed, el regreso. El regreso. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tough word. <laughs> el, el regreso. Beautiful. Love it. You guys can do that. Randy, uh, yeah, we can. And But you're an MVP behind that glass. We thank you, buddy. So we're going to get to that. Fantasy scenarios, either or type situation. We have to make a decision. All right. Uh, but first, let's do some news. One caveat. At 11.06 p.m. of every night, <laughs> a small elven-like figure with black eyes <laughs> appears by your side to take a three by three millimeter chunk of flesh <laughs> out of your body with his razor-like teeth. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! That's just a small clip of a uh, a past qualis tu fantasia we called him, and now it's fantasia. That episode was unhinged. <laughs> like I went back and listened to it, by the way, just real quick. And the first thing I heard was Greg say, "I love watching Blake Bortles," and I was like, "All right, this Uh-oh, is this is a very a old episode." Yeah, that was. And- it, it, it ended up with that, with a goblin-like flesh-eating character. That was well before we were being monitored by anyone else in uh, our building. <laughs> Hence the innocence we spoke of at the top of the show. And also great to hear Chris Wessling's voice and his laughter there. That was awesome. Um, all right. Let's get into the news. Let's start with the Patriots. Now, the Patriots last year, Connie, you'll remember that they were the quote-unquote winner of free agency. They mm-hmm. were the big spenders. They spent more than anyone. They Gave out number one tight end money to two guys, which was like it should have been a bit of a red flag there. Uh, but you know what? It, it worked on some level because the team improved. 
uh, with Mac Jones, a quarterback, of course, and, and got to the playoffs um, two years after Tom Brady. And they've been more quiet this year and even have lost some players, uh, including a Pro Bowl cornerback, of course. And it makes you think that where are the what are the Patriots doing? What are they up to? Are they actually getting better as the Bills rise up? And of course, the Dolphins look like they're rising up. Well, they made a move. They finally made a move that you could sink your teeth into. Mm-hmm. The Patriots acquire wide receiver Devontae Parker and a 2022 fifth round pick from the Dolphins in exchange for a 2023 third round pick. Th- third round pick. So the, the Patriots have been active on the trade market. We had heard about Robbie Anderson in the mix, but it's Devontae Parker in a rare AFC East on AFC East trade. Your thoughts? This is a total Belichick move, just making the move for a veteran wide receiver. I feel like that is something that a lot of times works out for the Patriots and doing that deal with Miami when Miami. Miami. <laughs> um, but I, look at Miami. There we go. It fills a glaring need with um, Parker, who he's got a lot of upside. He's big. He's physical. He's good after the catch. He can play all three spots. It's an affordable contract. And no, so now they don't have to be so thirsty at the draft for mm-hmm. a wide receiver. And it's a potential win-win for everyone because it's exactly what Mac Jones and the Patriots offense needs right now they don't have another wide receiver like Parker and he steps immediately into a number one wide receiver role it also lessens the pressure on Nelson Aguilar so he can get more time in the slot potentially and Parker gets a fresh start with a new team maybe a chance to hit the reset button there I mean they just need him to stay healthy um, but if they can do that it really might work out I like Jacoby Myers too and if you if you throw in Hunter Henry Jonu Smith Aguilar and Parker, it's it's not a bad cast at all. I mean, I, I think if you one thing for all of New England's brilliance, if you look at who they've drafted at wide receiver, be it first round, second, third, over the past you know decade, it's been abysmal. It's been a blind spot. It's the opposite of the Pittsburgh Steelers and what they had done at wide receiver. They have not been able to do that. So I think it's almost an admission of like, they were looking for someone. You mentioned Robbie Anderson. I think this is a good fit for Devontae Parker. I mean, when, when Tyreek Hill went to Miami, this was the obvious next move for Devontae Parker. I mean, everyone ever was saying he's, he's out the door. And so here you go. Um, to that point, and I'll, I'll go from the ATN era, which is 2013 onward, their, their failure to address the wide receiver position um, leads to having to go to free agency in the trade market. And those don't always work out either. But here are the wide receivers they've drafted since 2013. Aaron Dobson, Josh Boyce, Kembrell Tompkins, Jeremy Gallon or Galone, Malcolm Mitchell, Devin Lucian, Braxton Berrios, who's now productive for the Jets, uh, Nikhil Harry, Jacoby Myers. Uh, these are all guys. Myers was undrafted, and he's been a decent player, but uh, they, they've they struggled on that front. Now, Devontae Parker is interesting because he's a former first-round pick. Um, he de- definitely fits the mold of a um, big body outside receiver, the number one that Mac Jones needs to take the next step. Now, you look at his production, and he's only had one big year, and that was 2019 when he went 72 for 12.02 and nine touchdowns. With Ryan Fitzpatrick, right? With Ryan Fitzpatrick, yep. And uh, so he's entering now his age 29 season. So it's not a slam dunk. It's not as flashy as if they went out and got Tyreek Hill or DK Metcalf or whatever. But maybe these are the type of moves that fly under the radar and end up being more successful. We will see. But it makes you think also, Connie, that the Dolphins, who once they uh, traded for Tyreek Hill and have Jalen Waddell, Devontae Parker becomes uh, someone that they could move f- move on from, that they were confident sending him in the division makes makes you think that maybe they're not so high on his upside going forward. It's pretty telling how much they what they think of him, that they're going to face him twice a year. But I think that the Patriots know the potential with him because one of Parker's best games ever was against the Patriots and Stefan Gilmore just a few years ago. So oh, he bullied Bill Gilmore Belichick did game. not forget about that at all. So they know that that is somewhere in him and maybe they can unlock it. All right. Speaking of the Dolphins, Xavier Howard. What do the kids call it? X. He received the bag. <laughs> Five years, 90 million. Extension. Two translations. He had three years remaining on a five-year, $75 million contract signed in 2019. So add two years, another $50 million. He's now the highest-paid corner in football, so he's locked up into his 30s. Uh, this was a player, Mark, that has been very productive. Uh, three Pro Bowls in the last three years, led the inter- NFL in interceptions in 2020. Um, 
a guy you want to keep in the building. And after some acrimony last year, now they are all simpatico. Yeah, that holdout last year, I mean, there were whispers and thoughts that he might move out of Florida and out of Miami to somewhere else. And they kept him with a restructure. So this was coming. And I think that there's I, I really like one thing that's happening. Um, and I'm not, I know it's not all Mike McDaniel. It's Chris Greer, too. But they are finding good players and bringing them in as free agents. They are keeping their own guys. Mike McDaniel is not one of these coaches who floats into a roster that is half broken and good luck and see where you are three years from now. They have a lot of pieces. And the fact that, you know, remember Byron Jones was annoyed with what was happening with Xavier Howard a year ago. They have both of them still. They found a way to keep them both. It saves us um, an anti-drama going into the summer because I do think that Howard was a candidate to hold out again if he didn't get... Mm -hmm. Last year was a patch. It's like, we'll keep you around. We're going to have to address this down down the road and now they've done it. And the Dolphins said that they would revisit Howard's contract this offseason after they tweaked it in August, but it's first of all, I love that the team made good on that because they're trying to keep this defense together, but it's been kind of it's kind of crazy to me, a little wild because his agent said that this has been obviously in the works for a year, so that's crazy to think that he had four years remaining on his contract and they were already in talks to renegotiate and Byron Jones obviously getting paid set this all into motion but my random thoughts on this are I really like the idea of Xavier Howard and Tyreek Hill going at each other in practice and also Mm. I'm going to scrub my social media from all NFL network things to see if I can get a raise because that seems to work it seems I like that yeah it seems to have a positive effect uh, that's for sure. But Connie, yeah, Miami Dolphins, very intriguing team this off season. I'm setting the over under at nine and a half wins. What are you going with? I'm gonna take the over. Wow, banging the over. How about Sizzler? I will too. I think this is gonna be one of the more intriguing teams. You're out both there. wrong. They what? will be eight and nine. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Keep that sound clip. <laughs> yes. We shall see. Although, but, uh, isn't my, my fascination of Mike McDaniel, because this happens with like three coaches a year, mm-hmm. there's another world where it goes totally south and he completely nosedives. Right. I, I live in that world, so. the world of reality. They've done so You're much this that. last month, though. Yes, I've seen, I've looked into the future and you will be very disappointed. I know, Mark, you're in a, uh, a very uh, tough spot, fan base wise. Um, and if you start thinking about the Dolphins as a team to jump over to, I would advise you not. Not a candidate. I'm sitting in Greg's seat, so I should also mention, don't forget that Teddy Bridgewater is there, too. That's important. Mm-hmm. See, you yeah. know, carrying the torch for Rosie, as he's called. How and- you doing with the uh, the Greg bot, by the way? How's that coming? The Greg bot? I can only I can only have my fingers in one project at a time. And the Mark one has really taken on so much of my free time that I don't have. <laughs> You know, maybe somebody else could take on the okay. Greg Bot project. Okay, that's that seems like a lot of work on a, a several levels. I'm just gonna stay out of the Greg Bot. I'm I heard source that. it to the listeners. Well, I heard I heard your work and how, what you right. put together with that bot while I was gone. I was like, do I really need to dress myself and come into the office today? Because what is the difference between this and that? Nothing. Well, I mean, I missed you, but I, I guess from a show content, I, it delivered everything that. A Mark Wood. I'm content driven and it did every, everything that I could do. So bang, another drop right there. <laughs> <laughs> add it, Ricky, add it. All right. Two 49ers of the past in the news, starting with, and this is, you know, speaking of Greg, just terrible timing. Frank Gore is signing a one day contract to retire with the 49ers and join the San Francisco front office. Gore played forever, one of the leading rushers in NFL history, certain has, certainly has a case for Canton. Uh, Rich Eisen uh, coined him the inconvenient truth. Uh, th- that's how long Frank Gore was around because that was in reference to the Al Gore documentary that came out literally like 20 years ago. <laughs> um, and Frank Gore uh, had a really long, productive career. Uh, Connie, uh, it does it does hurt, though, because Greg was pounding the table for Gore forever. And to the point where I reached out to him on text, I said, do you want to deliver a message to the audience? And he laughed it off. And I was like, Whoa. dude, I wasn't joking. You've been talking about Gore forever. This is your moment. But he passed. So what does that tell you? <laughs> Probably enjoy his vacation with his family is what it tells you. Well, true. Yeah, so uh, Frank Gore, guys, one of the greatest running backs of all time, one of the greatest at the position. I just hope he pursues a path in the front office and not boxing because that didn't really work out 
so well for him oh, in that round. You had to bring that up. I do think he's a Hall of Famer, and, and uh, no, no questions asked. I know, it, it, like it, the, the length of the career, you could say that that at, that helped him compile these numbers. But he's not a compiler in my book on any level. He had 12 straight seasons with 1,200 plus scrimmage yards. He was utterly dominant. I he also was just personally my type of football player. Like I remember, you, you know that place, Joxers Daily, mm. that Culver City bar mm-hmm. that um, smells slightly of death in its previous incarnation. Mm-hmm. Floor is I, very sticky. They fixed right, it. right. We well, they, no, it looks better now. But I went in there one night. <laughs> this was October eighteenth, two thousand twelve, and this was a Thursday night Niners Seahawks clash. Low scoring. Niners won thirteen to six. Gore in that game ran for like eight plus yards a carry and looked incredible. I mean, it was just like, this is my type of player, my type of running back, and I totally get where Greg's coming from. And that was 2012 where it's like, if you look at the average length of a running back's career, maybe he'd be out of the league two years after it. He'd be replaced. He goes on to play for another eight and finishes with the Jets. No, well, yeah, that was. Not I'm not that saying that. The, I'm not citing the I, Jets as the high. You point, know what? But. I don't feel strongly enough to really come at anybody hard on the Frank Orth situation. I will say that. Uh, he was an all pro. He was never first team all pro. Uh, he was all pro second team once, made it to five Pro Bowls and never in the last seven years of his career. And I thought if you want to make a Hall of Fame case, then you open the door for other guys. I remember we used to get into these arguments with Wes or I used to all the time because I'd be like, well, look at Eli Manning. Look at his counting stats. And he's like, he's it's not about counting stats. For for me, with Frank Gore, if he gets to the Hall, it's because he hung around for so long and, and averaged three and 3.8 to 4.1 yards per carry his last seven years. Uh, I don't think he, when I think about the best running backs of the era, I don't think of Gore, but I think there's certainly something to be said for durability and being a great locker room presence and, and just being someone that you could count on at a very demanding position. So... I don't know if he's a Hall of Famer to me, but I, I'm not going to fight it either if you feel strongly. The average on the back end of his career is really impressive. I didn't know that. That's a good number. Though. Right. He didn't diminish. I, 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 yeah. do, I do see him as a Hall of Famer because I think he's a special – part of Hall of Fame is the story and, the, and what who you know how he fit into the history. And I don't know. There wasn't – like he wasn't just hanging around and falling off a cliff. To me, Al, Frank Gore – not Al Gore. We don't need an Al Gore discussion, but Frank Gore like was the same guy from wire to wire, and I, I just he's one of my favorite players. He finished with exactly sixteen thousand career rushing yards. By that's the way, cool which too. Kind of cool. Um, wow. Mark, can you name all? Don't five, do this. Five to me. teams that Frank Gore played with. All right. Um, Niners, Jets, Bills, and then I'm starting to fall apart at that point. Dolphins. Oh, Dolphins. Yeah. One more. Need it. Got to get it. Three years, 2015 to 2017. Oh, man. I don't like these types of questions because I can't remember what I was doing yesterday at this time. The Indianapolis I was going to say, it was was too late. That's right. It was too late. Mm. All right. It's fine. I hate losing. (laughs) Well, I'm brought in as a finishing piece (laughs) to those teams. Yes. Uh, as I said, uh, other former Niners news, Colin Kaepernick still in the news following a throwing exhibition on Saturday. Colin Kaepernick indicated that he's willing to accept a backup quarterback job in the NFL. Kaepernick has not taken a snap since the 2016 season. Obviously, the only real way for him to get back into the game is as a backup. So he's letting it be known. He's now 40, 34 years old. Um, and we know the story around Kaepernick and uh, how he became such a divisive figure uh, across the league. And um, do you think there's any chance, Mark, we see Colin Kaepernick get another job? It's telling to me that he didn't get one last year or the year before when a lot of this had melted away. And, and I think that there were more coaches and teams out there. And then there's a team like the Seahawks that multiple years they've expressed interest and nothing's happened. And even Pete Carroll... Uh, you know, a week ago at the owners' meetings, uh, sort of said nothing's moved forward with that. I mean, it's notable that this workout was conducted by Jim Harbaugh, who probably would have been the one guy, if he were still in the league, that would bring Kaepernick in. I mean, I think there's another chance, but he's older, he's not played in a long time, and it's I don't see it as a lightning rods type signing necessarily for some coaches, but there's younger guys out there that you want to grow and develop as your backup. And so I think he's in a tough spot unless a team gets into a pinch. Yeah, I mean, the fact that Cap never got a second chance, even as a backup quarterback anywhere in the league, because we've seen ridiculous 
players playing the quarterback position, especially like during COVID and stuff, when they were using like wide receivers at the quarterback position, teams were just running out of bodies. The fact that Cap never got a second chance at all when Deshaun Watson's out here signing a record breaking deal kind of tells me everything I already knew about society in general. But I thought it was really interesting on one of your episodes last week. You guys talked about the NFL being really clicky. And that I think is so so important and it's so real because I never really thought about that before about the NFL kind of being a click but it is and if you go against what everyone else is doing then like you're kind of the pariah and a lot of teams don't want to risk that and that comes with the territory of Colin Kaepernick but it's just mind-blowing to me that Kaepernick never got another call well how about this Brian Flores files a civil suit uh connected to racial discrimination quickly gets hired by the Steelers. That was, a, I thought that was a very positive mm-hmm. sign for a, a clicky league that sometimes can turn its shoulder easily and collectively. If Flor- Flores can get another, another job immediately on the staff of the Steelers, you know, you know, somebody should be bringing in Kaepernick for a workout, but you know what? It hasn't happened yet. And why not, like, why not have him in for training camp and let him compete and see he, you know, he talked about himself as, you, if you bring me in, I will prove that I have, I can win games for you, that I'm a starter. Okay, that's great in words, but what, what's the harm in bringing him in for August, July and August and seeing what you have? If no team does, I think that's very telling. All right, let's take a break and then continue the news. All right, we are back. Time for news and notes presented by Upwork, where you could build the team that will build your business. Learn more at Upwork. Dot com. Ugh. NFL Network's Ian Rappaport expects the Browns to trade Baker Mayfield before the draft. Wait a minute. What was that uh, guffawing or whatever that <sighs> set, that verbal? That yeah, that I, mean, I can't you... be alone. Is anyone else like super exhausted with the Baker Browns quarterback? Anything? Oh, any of this stuff? Gonna, it's not going away. Well, n- well, it could. What if we fired into the sun? Well, that's what <laughs> we attempted to do on our. <laughs> Let's try show. it again. Yeah. Let's try it right here. Okay, and go. It's through the stratosphere. It looks like it's, it's returning. Is it coming back? <laughs> oh, no. It's coming back. Oh, no. Toward our Earth. It's back. <laughs> Cleveland is expected to cover. It didn't work. Part of a Mayfield's $18 million salary. Uh, so... That's where we're at now. So, and don't listen to anything you hear about the Browns maybe be willing to to keep Baker Mayfield on on, uh, on the team. That's just not an option. Uh, so he's going to be moved. It just matters now where he ends up. Seattle makes sense. Carolina should make some sense. The Titans are being mentioned out there. Whoa, the Titans and Bucks uh, reportedly also landing spots. Let's get the Grave Digger on this one. Great. Nonsense. Nonsense what about as in backup, though. Nonsense as in your feelings on it, or if you think the reporting is unsound. I think the reporting is speculation on teams that could use a upgrade at backup quarterback. But unless Mayfield is cut, the Titans can't pay that fifth year option salary with the way they currently. Yeah, he's have expensive. That that's the part like that million. needs to change here, yeah. and that's why they're not getting any offers. Exactly. How about this? What? You know what I want to watch this summer? What? I want to watch Baker Mayfield and Jared Goff in a hard knocks training camp battle. What if he ended up in Detroit? Hmm. I am so glad that I'm not using the Qualis 2 Fantasia that I initially <laughs> came up with because it was that exact scenario. No <laughs> I mean, it's literally exact Wait, that really? whole thing about Jared Goff. In this, I'll say it real quick. In this scenario, Jared Goff um, is on a hike in Malibu with his um, new girlfriend and uh, is bitten by a snake, goes into a coma, and the Lions are forced to trade for Baker Mayfield, who rides in on horseback and leads them to the playoffs for the first time in 30 years, as he did with Cleveland after their long absence from the playoffs. But then I said, you know what? I don't like that that scenario, yeah, so I, so I waxed it. Jared Goff sounds like he was seriously injured by a snake, was it? No, well, the other part B was that he awakens from coma oh, oh. right before Thanksgiving, um, replaces a middling Baker Mayfield, rips off like five straight wins, and then they lose in the playoffs. Hmm. Interesting. 
but you can see why I pat. See, I also I know that if I a Baker Mayfield scenario gets has no traction with Dan, no. so it's like right. I gotta play to the audience. Here. I, I thought like maybe a hard knocks thing would would get a little pop, and Dan just stared at me dead. In no, the it's eyes. D- Dan. Dan is over this. Can we try to do it again? Can we try? Maybe this one will get to the sun. It, it somehow got rejected and turned back our way, and now we're talking about other hypotheticals connected to Baker Mayfield and a trade. Come on. That's the rocket on, launcher. Baby. It sounds like it's made of wood. Get through there. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah. Go. Go. It's like from Go. Game of Thrones. Yeah. What Go. are we doing here? Uh oh. It's turning. It's coming back. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Banged in the biggest spot. Ouch. <laughs> ah! That was a house behind us. Um, all right. Uh, that was. <laughs> People at Upwork getting their money's worth on that one. That was News and Notes presented by Upwork, the world's work marketplace. Learn, learn more at Upwork.com. Finally, a little uh, league uh, floatsome and jetsome. Texans sign Marlon Mack, the running back. The Bucks re-sign former Hard Knocks star Giovanni Bernard. Remember, he drove an old beat-up minivan? I remember that. I didn't remember that. No, I don't remember it. And poor Brandon <laughs> Cooks. The Texans have received, quote, multiple calls reportedly on the wide receiver. Now, this is another fun game. Connie, I'm going to put you on the spot. Here we go. Brandon Cooks pulling it up on old pro football reference. Oh, God. Okay. Name the teams for Brandon Cooks. Uh, So, obviously, he was with the Saints for a little bit, the Rams. He was with the Patriots. He's uh, the Texans. Um, Who am I missing? I think you're good. You got it. it. Got that. Hey. All right. It's a lot of teams for a 28-year-old who has 1,000 yards a season. But I think he's yeah. getting traded because people it's like people yeah, this want one him. Might this, be this different. This is a little bit different than he's floating from team to he's team. He's had a weird journey. Yeah, he has. All right, that's what's happening in the news. All right. Now. Everyone, understand we're about to enter the land of the mystical. Okay, this is not the work of an occult. This is not witchcraft, but this is also something to not let the children hear because we're entering into a dark universe. I was going to say metaverse. I think that works. A dark and sometimes stormy metaverse. I didn't use it initially because I wasn't sure if it, it was. <laughs> I, I think that more means that there are you're, you're flip-flopping in a I'm, metaverse type show from timeline to timeline. There's a multiverse too, multiverse. right? Yeah, that's multiverse. what I was, that's what I was looking for. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the metaverse can be desi- de- defined as a simulated digital environment that uses augmented reality, virtual reality. That's this world. Maybe. Yeah. That's this podcast. But just yes. put the kids to okay. bed. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Bat in the hatchets. Because it's time once again for Qual es tu fantasia, colon. El regreso. <laughs> ¿Cuál es tu fantasía? El regreso. Amazing. Randy Chavez. Mark, do you want to get us going or do you want to build up to a little Sessler? I'd be happy to get us going. Get us going. All right. While you sit in your work cubicle staring at the doomed midday sun, an angelic being descends and informs you telepathically that you have a decision to make. Choice A, you can be Josh Allen for the next calendar year, having his talents, all of his experiences, his ups and downs, you're him, feeling what he feels, but you also have a double consciousness where you can tell you are aware that you are you having this experience inside of him. And you come out of it, back to being you, writing a groundbreaking novel, The Flinger, that is so insanely detailed and accurate in describing the life of an NFL quarterback that it goes down as the greatest sports novel and then sports film of all time. You are celebrated like royalty for the next three years, but then suddenly perish when a wayward missile mistakenly launched from a base in Tehran scatters your 70-foot yacht. You go down in history, though, as a total hero because you save the life of both actress Jennifer Lawrence and the real Josh Allen, pushing them off deck into safe waters just before the missile lands, because that's what heroes do. Damn, or, right. <laughs> oh, or, no, oh, no, or no, okay. choice B. Wait, it was it was Lawrence and Josh Allen on the yacht. I'm just noting all this. I'm doing the same. Yeah, okay, there'd be ahead. multiple people on the yacht, and he was able to save the, them before. Those are the special people. Yes. Yes. Choice B. <laughs> all right, you live to be 100. 
with all the pleasures of life, yada yada, save for four issues. Mark's worst nightmare. Go on. One, you are not allowed to use the internet ever again. Mm, problem. Two, no matter where you are, you sense a faint smell of rotting cheese in the air. Oh mm. my God. Problem. Three, whenever you watch football, you have zero ability to see the quarterback on screen. To you, the quarterback is utterly invisible. No QB. Hmm. Four. In sight line, ever. Okay. Number four. You live with a kitten named Curly Girl. Mm. The problem for you is that Curly Girl has the ability to read your mind, keenly observe your actions, and telepathically produce a daily online blog in reverse Josh Allen fashion that totally exposes your ups and downs. It becomes a massive sensation, but against your will. You can't figure out who's chronicling your darkest secrets. Yes, you become this sort of anti-hero who is super honest and seen that way by others, but you didn't want any of this out there. And of course, you never come around to the conclusion to blame Curly Girl for writing this blog. P.S. When Curly Girl dies, cats live to be like, what, 15 or something? Mm -hmm. You are dumb enough to buy a subsequent kitty named Curly Girl 2.0, and that kitten has the same power. Then Curly Girl 3.0, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You never figure it out. That was going to be my loophole. So you got to pick. How old are you on the yacht missile, the yacht attack? You're you, but you only have, you know, it would. the book would come out, let's say, a year after Josh Allen's next season. Right. And then you. And there was a movie option. The movie gets made and becomes a hit. So how? In long between that, you, from from the minute that the book comes out. How long do I live after? That's I'd say about yeah. total another five years tops. Mm. So live the forty six. Do I have like Emily and the boys? Are they in my life? That's yeah. That you're. It's you. It's you. But you also. I'm not. The only thing I don't know how to explain is where you go when you're inside Josh Allen for a year. But that's that's the the work of a writer <laughs> that you would be doing to create the novel. But. Well, you, I mean, I feel like you created two nightmare scenarios for me personally. Well, that's um, the point, isn't it? Well, I mean, that's why we put the kids to bed. That's why we bat right. the patches because it's not always a fairy tale. And, and certainly when it's Mark's turn, there's never a positive choice. So it becomes um, a Sophie's choice. Uh, what do you think, Colleen? Okay, so <clears throat> I'm thinking this through right now, and I'm thinking that the second scenario sounds – worse but if your cat is just like exposing your day to everyone online but like who is reading that who even knows how to find curly girl like does it find does it well i said, it be, I said what, uh, what are the numbers this i said it becomes does? a massive sensation who reads blogs anymore well okay so let's say the cat gets it, you know the content would is be the cat on tiktok the, the content would become uh multi multi platform this cat is. It's the rotting cheese <laughs> smell vicious. in the air that constantly follows me See, around. See, that bothered me the least because you would get used to that. Uh, would you? You would. If it was always there. Like when people... you're around someone, the bat smells bad. Or if you smell bad yourself, right. it, it, it starts to not bother you after a certain amount of time. Right. Maybe. I don't think, not for me. Okay. I have a smell thing. You got a smell thing. Yeah, that, that does it for me. So I'm going to take the, I'm going to perish in a, on a yacht. <sighs> after saving Jennifer Lawrence and Josh Allen and being a hero. That's why you have to go that route, Mark, and I'll tell you why. I think you overplayed your hand a little bit on the on the second one, only because you're the big sell for the Where? Se- Where did I possibly do that? The big sell, I think, <laughs> for the the uh, the second was was a long life, that you get to live a long life. But everything else runs counter to living, wanting to live. Like no internet, okay. That that's you know, gonna be tough. That's gonna be tough, but we've we've been there before, and the, and you would be okay after a while. The rotting cheese thing. See, I I that's not pleasant, but I could deal with that in time. The no quarterback in my sight line ever. That would effectively rule out football as something I would watch after a while, just because you lose that. But the whole kitten thing is a nightmare scenario. I'm also allergic to cats, so. Like, it's crazy to me that I would keep buying these cats after they die. <laughs> um, and the fact that it would be documenting all my, like, darkest thoughts, that doesn't sit well with me. And, and the fact that it would become a sensation, I'm out. So give me five years to live as a hero. Yeah. And it's uh, horrible, but that's the way I have to go. See, I'm all, I'm allergic to cats. I'm also allergic to dogs. And I keep buying cats and dogs, too. So mm-hmm. that part didn't bother me at all. Um, I think that living as a hero, uh, dying as a hero, 
living and dying as a hero right. is my answer. So there you go, Mark. You got us all to uh, admit that we'd rather die in less than five years. That's so Let's, bleak. Well, hold on. I mean, what was I supposed to? Bat in the hatch. You, you want uh, like me to come in with a dog and pony like <laughs> Pollyanna scenario? <laughs> uh, no, no. It'd just be you. I like it. Where's uh, the elven like creature with the black eyes that's gonna take three point three millimeters <laughs> off of well, my we've, flesh? We've every done night. that one. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Connie. What you got? Okay. All right. Here we go. Wait. Wait for Randy. Okay. Cuál es tu fantasía? El regreso. What a voice on that one. I love it. That guy can All right. Guy's Here got we some go. Pipes. The phone rings. <laughs> Looks like a cue. All right, it's Les Sneed. Huh? <laughs> it gets answered. <laughs> it gets answered. It's Les Sneed. He's just finished an efficient workout and a perfectly personalized protein shake. On the other line, someone desperate to run. In fact, it's all he thinks about, dreams about, obsesses about. Can't say I blame him. I frequently think about going on the lamb, but for him it's different. Mm. After tearing his ACL in the Super Bowl, the only thing that matters to Odell Beckham Jr. is running free again. The conversation with Les is warm but short. Les explains that Beckham won't be part of the Rams next mm. season. That's it. And that he let his heart do the talking at that video conference two weeks ago when he told reporters that he mm -hmm. wanted Beckham back. Mm -hmm. God damn it, Odell. The Ramley will never be the same. Ramley. Said a breathless Sneed. Mm -hmm. And then the call drops. A oh, busy signal. Odell <laughs> felt dizzy, <laughs> like he might even throw up. He needed to clear his head. But before he could cue up the second season of Starstruck, his ears filled with ringing. And damn it, it was his phone again. God, this thing. <laughs> All right. But this time, it was another GM calling with an offer he couldn't refuse. You choose the adventure here. Was it A, Andrew Barry? saying, baby, come back? Was it B, Bill Belichick promising another ring to the future Patriot? Mm -hmm. Was it C, Chris Ballard persuading Odell to bring Indy back to relevance? Mm -hmm. Or was it D, Brian Gutekunst oh. with an invitation to the hottest vacation destination in Wisconsin, the Packers. Goody. So aggressive that Wow. <laughs> Choose your own adventure. I absolutely am going goody. I don't like this um Packers wide receiver room right now. It needs some sizzle. I know Odell's a little up and down now at this stage of the game, uh back to back ACLs, but that still makes sense as a destination and, and trying to see what would happen. If you put him in that offense as a guy that um, they need. Now he stepped up for the Rams in the playoffs. Could he do it for the Packers and get them over the hump? That one is the most intriguing to me when against the Colts, the Pats, and the Browns. The Bill Belichick, another ring thing, does not ring true for me because they don't have that team right now. And I think if you're Odell, you're trying to simply win Super Bowls and you look at Mac Jones and say, nice player, but it was just a week ago that he talked about Matt Ryan fitting so well in Indy. That said, what are the Packers doing if they don't do more at wide receiver? He fits perfectly well with Aaron Rodgers. I'm with Dan. I'm, and, you know, we've got the Goody song, the mm -hmm. sound bites. Um, I don't know if Odell's nightlife is the most important thing at this point. Green Bay, not the greatest thing for that. But these guys can fly to wherever they want all the time. I'm going Packers. They yeah. tried to get him last year, too. I mean, the, yeah, the problem is there's no Delilah in Green Bay. But that's, no. that's the big spot here. But, yeah, I mean, I think... I agree. The Colts are a little short at wide receiver, and you want to give Matt Ryan the best chance possible. Otherwise, why did you take on uh, that contract and go down that road? Um, I'm not totally sold on the Patriots' skill position players there, um, even with Devontae Parker yet, but I just don't see Odell as a fit there. I don't either. I don't, I don't like that. And the Browns one... That yeah. feels played to me. I, I I hear the chatter, but come on. It would, you know. I heard also Jarvis Landry might be interested in going back. How about yeah? Let's let's a clean break uh, and move on. 
otherwise, we're going to bring up that other right. name again. And it, it went into the sun and it exploded. So. Yeah. All right. We're with you. Goody is the choice. Do you? Is that I, what you that's want? That's who I would have gone with too. Goody. Clean that's sweep. why I saved him for last. Yep. I can't believe Les Need with, with crocodile tears was like, oh, the Ramley will never be the same again. Yeah. yeah it's that, not like that him. Didn't seem, that seemed a little disingenuous to Odell. I, I feel like how often has he said Ramley? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Les Snead doesn't seem like a Ramilly speaking guy. It was a weird conversation. Yeah, very strange. All right, let's take a break and we'll do uh, one more. All right, we are back in case you're just joining us, which would be weird on a podcast. Uh, <laughs> this is uh, a game that's been returned from the, the Mystic Deep called ¿Cuál es tu fantasía? El regreso. All right. Mark. This applies to both of you, but okay. Mark. I was like, you're making him go again? Do you not have one? Again. <laughs> How <laughs> many teams did Brian Sipe play for? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into it. It's March 18th, 2022. Time travels into play. Andrew Barry and the Haslams are in a conference room in Cleveland with Deshaun Watson and his agent. Watson has been handed a gold pen to sign the contract extension that will finalize the blockbuster trade that will change the Browns forever. Some say for better, others worse. Just as the infamous QB is set to put pen to paper, the door swings open. (laughs) Or creaks open? No, the door explodes. And in walks a hero without a cape, Mark Sessler. Mark is met with stunned silence and confused glares. He cuts through the tension with an opening statement and snatches the pen from Watson. Mark demands Cleveland officials rethink their seismic decision at QB. Jimmy Haslam, the owner, perhaps moved, perhaps frightened. Remember, the door exploded. (laughs) Acquiesces to Mark's pleas and nixes the deal. It's over! Okay. This immediately becomes the wildest NFL story of all time and huge international news. Podcaster breaks into team headquarters, coerces or convinces ownership to back out of one of the craziest deals ever, the one that could, you know, you get it. Mark's unreal determination to risk it all and position principle over winning makes him a cult hero. Andrew Barry and Kevin Stefanski are both swept out of the building in the ensuing fallout. A new leadership, which now includes Mark in a largely ceremonial advisory (laughs) role, Uh struggles mightily to pivot. Cleveland free falls to a 4-27 record over the next two seasons. A controversial trade of Miles Garrett and a first for Gardner Minshew is met with a tsunami of criticism from a howling football cognizant. Suspicions that Sestog is pulling the strings are rampant. The struggles of the team reshapes how Browns fans see Mark's intrusion on team business years earlier, and he becomes a pariah for the fan base. The Browns quietly strip Mark of his honorary title, and Sestog slips into obscurity. The entire saga has an untold effect on the Sestog's physical and mental well-being. Which leads me to the question. (laughs) Great. (laughs) Do you still stop Deshaun Watson from signing that contract? Yes. Wow. Why? Well, because I think, like, if I, first of all, get the one camera off me as soon as possible. <laughs> In the tightest of tight right, shots like, ever. Not the day for it. Um, 
Because I think if you do something that you believe in, you're probably going to pay a price half the time anyways. Right. Mm. So the other option is don't do something you believe in and continue to coast. So that's that's where, as far as I can go at this point with it. Yes, I think I would because I also like the concept of the door exploding, like taking the grit, the golden pen and throwing it to the side, right? And then having like these multi-millionaires staring at me, trying to connect the dots because we've talked to each other once or twice in the deep past. Like, who is this nerd that just entered the room? Right. And what is he about to do? So I like that part of it. Nerds around the world. And then the the teams deep struggles and the fan base turning against you and you well, becoming that, the, a pariah. The problem You'll there live is with be, that. I feel like I become, well, I don't, I wouldn't love it. I mean, I think I become sort of like Jack Easterby part two, it sounds like. Um, and on top of it, like the idea that I would think that, that where I sit with my current football knowledge, right. which I agree would be limited for a general manager role or something like that, right. that I would trade Miles Garrett in a first round pick yes. for a, a Gardner Minshew figure that is yeah. another three years old. I mean, at this point, like, what substances are inside no, you tra- of me? This, that happens in the ensuing this off season. You have to fill the quarterback position again. But even right? even yeah. this off season, that would <laughs> that sets me up to be a total rube. Like I wouldn't do. I would never. I only up. notice in this moment that you're wearing a Browns hat right now, which is interesting as well. As I speak to you about this, it's uh, it cites my old stance, my old fandom. He doesn't have to get rid of the hat. You can, you, right. you can rock that hat for it's as long a, as you it's want. An, it's an elf. I'm more into it's like a bad oh, elf. It's an elf figure. Elf, elf so. Colleen, if you okay. were in Mark's shoes, where would you come down? So this like cushy advisory role. What's that about in the front office? It's hazy. It's just like and and what like you a should Bruce know. Arians type role. Right. That's what like, I was yeah. thinking. What you should know is that we don't really know for sure um, if you had anything to do with you know the Garrett for Minshew trade. But people, you know how passionate Browns fans are. They would they would dig up old podcasts and they'd see like how big a fan I'd you were. I'd be totally targeted. And you weren't even necessarily be behind that move. Uh, maybe you had some input, but you weren't pulling the triggers. But that will be how it's remembered, that you were the one that did it. Yeah, I think they would go back and look at, you know, they would study their tape of this show and be like, that idiot is the one who right. pulled Even the if that wasn't that true, team. but it right. really doesn't matter what was true or not. That's how the public would take that. My problem no, it's, is it's, the end of it, the fact that how – so it's just he lives out the rest of his life with mental and physical anguish. Like, if he chooses to go down that road. I don't like that aspect for right. Mark. Um, uh, nor does Mark. If <laughs> but, I was Mark, yeah. I would also blow up the door and the trade and say I'm annoyed now because that's in general how I feel. But that's the easy part. Right. <laughs> but right. if I'm saying what I think uh, – if I had the power right. here, I would – uh, let Mark live out his days in relative relaxation and same and not but not stressful. As we know things. in the game of ¿Cuál es tu fantasía? ¿Cuál es tu fantasía? El regreso. It's just not how things tend to turn out, unfortunately. But we actually live in the world where the other choice was made. Like it did happen, and I right. just go on. So. If I that's, actually, that's the other choice. If you I just, really think about it, like I don't care what the Browns do. That's what I'm trying to get. All right. At. Well, so let me actually, like, cause, you know, you're answering these questions on the flight. Like they could, they've already done what they do. This, so we, I'm living in the. The other option is just the current existence. We, you and I, enjoyed that book, eleven twenty two sixty three, right, by Stephen King, right, where they find a uh, portal in like an old diner that allows the guy to stop the JFK assassination. That's what we're dealing with here. You could just avoid that diner. I they I, they can make their choice. I thought for a second it was like I have to be all about that choice and stay a fan and be super excited about it. I'll just stay with where I am right now. I'm doing my thing. They can do their thing. If have we could nice bring time. over Cess Dog though, like that's something that I could get behind. Just the nickname sticking the, in a yeah. big spot. Mm-hmm. I also got hooked yeah. into the cushy, you know, probably well paid role at some point. That's you know, that's not the most. Uh, <laughs> that's not the worst thing to think about. That sounded kind of nice. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right. Do okay. we have anything else? Um, well, Connie? here, I have a quick one. All right, Connie. Last one. Here we go. Okay. Ooh. All right. You've been told you must board a plane immediately. The only information you've been given is you must stay awake for 47 straight hours. Mm, you can do it tough. one of two ways. The first option is watching a 2017 week three Jags Titans game on loop. Ufa. The second is having a nonstop conversation with the NFL Network insider of your choosing. You decide. 
47 straight hours of talking or watching the same game over and over and over again. A terrible game. And, well, it should be said, because I want to make sure we're on the same page, that according to the language in this company, there is only one NFL Network insider. It's Ian Rappaport. Okay. There are other insiders or reporters, but there's only one guy that gets that title fixed to his name. Am I correct? Okay. I think you mean the broader umbrella of inside. Insi- in- well, they call them insiders, right? But there's only I one there's NFL only Network one. insider. Well, right. there is only one. It's in his contract. It's in the boilerplate of the deal. So okay. is it is it is it Ian or Bust or is it um, you could pick from the? I think you can pick from palette. any of the newsmakers. Here. Newsmakers. Newsmakers. How news, about that? Newsbreakers. And and I should also just throw in there that like I I don't remember the 2017 week three game. I don't even know if the Jags and Titans played each other right. at that point. But I think we get what you're saying. Just picture that. that. But wait, but, what, what was at stake though? That's what I forgot. Like, why am I staying awake for 47 straight hours again? You're you're rewarded with a handsome prize, cash prize at the end. Oh, and what if I, I, I fall asleep? That. What if I fall asleep? You're banged in a big spot. That's it. Oh, Plane that's crashes it. and you die. Oh, well, that's, well, <laughs> well, that would be, that would be a big one. Uh, Can't fall asleep. 47 straight hours. I, well, I won't, Almost I, two days. I'm famous in my house for falling asleep all the time, on like on the couch and stuff when we're trying to watch TV shows. Drives my wife crazy, and I, I, I'm not ashamed to admit that on those Mondays, those power rankings Mondays after a long Sunday, when I'm going through every game on uh, Game Pass, uh, when I'm about seven games in and it's three thirty in the afternoon. Uh, I've been known to doze off during watching some of these. It games. is a tonic for that. Yeah. So now you're telling me I'm watching the like a terrible mm-hmm. game from five years ago between two bad teams. There's no chance I stay awake. Right. The only chance I have to stay awake and I guess not die in a plane crash is to be talking to someone. And let me add this: the right. talking to someone that obviously helps you stay awake. You have someone to bounce off of, but they, you have to split the pot of money at the end with that person. Well, but I'm with Dan. I would I would not off probably in quarter four of the first showing of that game. Right. So we'd have problems. I I um I'm going with the talking with um you know I could talk with Mike Garofolo for 47 hours and we would be his job would be to keep me awake. I did a sleep study in Boston once where I had to. I was I needed money. It was in a hospital. You had to at one point stay <laughs> up for 48 straight hours. Wait, really? And, yes, and it was um by the end of it you're seeing visions. It's insane. I don't recommend it, and I didn't make a lot of money for it either. But um, there were nurses and doctors that would come in and kind of help you a little bit. So I know that in my experience, you absolutely need human interaction to not totally fade away. So you're going, wow. I'm going, Mike G, and like I'll split the pot with Mike G. Also, I don't know what the, what is you said, big cash prize. That could be a hundred dollars. That could be. It doesn't matter what the prize is. I just want well, to stay alive. Matters. I don't want to. Oh, right. Yeah. I'd you say will also, never have to worry about money again for the rest of right, your life. You tell the insider, if you don't keep me awake, we're both dying. So right. there's a fair motivation there. I can't believe you have experience with this ridiculous scenario. <laughs> what? Uh, it's, yeah. Like, <laughs> Ricky, did you have ago. something to add here? Yeah, I got a quick one for you, Dan. Okay. Okay. So it is this off season currently. Yeah. A little fairy is going to come to you and say... And it's not me. And it's going to come to you and say, the Jets are going to be the biggest team you've ever seen. They are going to acquire every big free agent. They are going to make blockbuster trades. They are going to be the top of the news cycle. Sala is at the top of his game. Zach Wilson has developed into this amazing quarterback. The only give that you need to do to make sure that this happens is no longer host the Around the NFL podcast, and it's Greg who gets to host the show. And all he does is go, hmm, Dan, what do you think? And then you only get a couple sentences before he cuts you off every day, three to four shows a week. Do you take the deal? (laughs) So I give up the host chair to Greg. Or the Jets are the biggest. Now, that's some, like, classic, like, old-time, like, here's the monkey paw. Did it make three wishes? And he's like, I want the Jets to be the biggest team ever. And then they're all giants. They're all, yeah. like, 50 feet tall, and it was a trick. Yeah. Is this, like, a monkey paw No, no, no. This is trick? a full-blown, like, like, dynasty <laughs> ring after ring after ring. But I still get to do the podcast? 
You do, but it's up to, you know, it's Greg coming up with the bits and you only get a few He's words driving. here and there. And He's driving the bus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So my position obviously remains totally unchanged. <laughs> right. <laughs> gotcha. Right. Well, you're used to that with him anyway, so. Uh, I would I would take the, uh, the dynasty. You would? I would. Okay. I would. Because uh, I think Greg would capably drive the boat and I think that uh, it would be fun to be in, in a different perspective and I'd probably make life more difficult for Greg and that would be fun too so <laughs> that would be my choice okay. and then my favorite team gets to become a dynasty okay that's kind of easy actually nice. that might become wow. annoying on the show by the way just to let you know <laughs> good what stuff fantasia? el regreso alright there you go let's 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 exit this world let's go because after a while it starts to feel like you might not ever get out you know so let's get out while we can you can't stay in too long well, nobody wins in that world, so let's go. Some would say we we did stay in too long by about 15 <laughs> to 20 minutes. But listen, we don't go in there too often uh, with good reason because it is connected to dark forces. Mm-hmm. Okay? But now we're out. Connie, you've said it all. Thank you. Uh, this Faith American Ale by Kelsey Grammer is all I need to get by. Um, Make sure you share it. Nice and cold. Okay, good. Drink it nice and cold. Yep. Um... Thank you. Cheers, everybody. Anything, Dad? Um, uh, nope. You <laughs> are you starting to realize the folly of trading for James Harden if you believe yourself to be a credible NBA championship contender? This is because I'm wearing a Sixers sweatshirt. It is. Right it now. did remind me. Maybe. I whatever. I just wanted Ben Simmons out of there. You got that. Yep. But you it was fun for a while. Oh yeah, he's. But Ben Simmons is really helping the Nets right now. He's really been doing a lot for them. I think he just started some light workouts again. So I got her fired up. That's all it took. And now he's filing. Simmons is filing a lawsuit to get the money back for not playing. What Good a luck. world. Good luck. Yeah, I don't I don't like the Ben Simmons uh, storyline. All right, Mark. Yes. You two said it all and your shirt says be kind four times. And I, I think that's a good thing for everyone to try to remember. Pulled it out of the hamper. <laughs> Beautiful. All right. Thank you, Randy Chavez, Brave Digger, Ricky Hollywood, Connie Fox. The whole gang. We'll be back Thursday with another show. Make sure you're here for it. Till then, you know what to do. Heed the call.